Used to the city, now we got our own land Life's getting real busy, busy. None of it was ever planned Got the crib looking pretty, pretty. With a garden full of plants, plants. And we built our own committee yeah. From the bottom we advance yeah. Back to our roots, roots. Now we get back to our roots yeah. Put on your boots Put on. It's time to go take off your suit so. Back to our roots yeah. Yeah. Now we get back to our roots yeah. Put on your boots it's time to fun with Cheryl Swoops right now, right now, yeah, yeah, right now, right now. Hey guys, Cheryl Swoops here. Welcome to Back to Our Roots Homestead. Today is going to be our first edition of our workshop. And I think in another video we actually mentioned all the different things that we would be doing on the homestead. Um, and today I'm going to introduce you guys to the fellas who will be working in the workshop. So starting off, I got, I'm gonna say my favorite today, so he don't feel some type of way. My favorite nephew, Keegan, he is assisting today. This is the man. Mm -hmm. He is the one that will kind of be running everything. Earl the Pearl. <laughs> when it comes to um, carpentry and things like that, he's the man. This is my brother Earl. And on the end, we got my nephew, Audie. <laughs> So Audie lives in Dallas, and I'm going to give him a little shout out. Um, so those of you who are in the Dallas area or anywhere, anywhere really, yeah, anywhere really, check out his podcast, Petty and Friends. That's right, Petty and Friends. So again, this is not um, something I do. I'm just here to introduce them, and this is where I actually step out of the video. But before I do that, I think today what they're going to be working on is going to be a what are y'all fixing? We're going to build a six foot workbench. Did you hear that? A six foot workbench. Six foot long workbench. It's above my pay grade. Um, <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys for tuning in today. And I think this is kind of the before, or part of the before, and tune in for the after. All right? All right, guys, we're back. And uh, what we're going to do first is we've got to get the legs. Of the, of the table. So what we're going to do is, this is an eight foot tall piece of uh, four by four pine. It's treated pine, so you can basically use any type of wood you would like, but in this instance we're using treated pine. We're going to cut these down to get the legs, so we need four of them, and we're going to cut them down to two and a half feet, and we'll show you the process we're going to use. Okay guys, we're back. So what we're going to be doing, I'm going to show the process. We're going to be using a 12 inch miter saw. And uh, I'll explain to you what that, what a miter saw does. But this is a, a smaller piece of the uh, 4x4 treated pine that we had left over from a previous uh, project. And all we're going to do is just get the two and a half feet out of this. So what you want to do is, once you get your wood marked, you want to lay it up on the miter saw. And you see I've got my line marked here. I'm going to cut to the uh, right hand side of my mark. And what you have to remember using a miter saw, if I'm, if I'm cutting to the right hand saw the very first cut, then I want to make sure I cut to the right hand side of every single cut after this as well. So they all come out the same length. There we have it, two and a half feet, and I'm going to cut the other three, same length. One thing I want to show you guys is that anytime you're working by yourself and you're needing to cut eight foot long, ten foot long board, it really doesn't matter. If you're working on a miter saw, you'll notice the, the saw is up high off my workbench. And you can support the wood that you're cutting by using a 4x4 underneath that and it rests on top so that you're able to get a, a straight across cut across the across the saw. So if you're working by yourself, don't worry about tightening your wood and holding up on the saw while you cut it. Okay, everybody, we're back, and uh, we're getting ready to start on the framework of the table. 
So the framework is going to be made from two by fours. What we have here, what I've got on the miter saw is eight foot long two by four. So I'm making a six foot long table. What I'm going to do is so I need to cut two feet off of each two by four. So the both sides will consist of the top part of the table and then I'll have the bottom part. So this table here is, is a table we've made previously that was eight foot long and all we're doing is going to do the same concept we're just making a six foot long table. So if you look at this table there's uh, the length of it's eight foot and I'm going to be duplicating this only in six foot. Six foot long top, six foot long bottom. So what I'm about to do now is cut, I need four of these, two on each side, and to make my side of the table that I'm going to cut the eight foot long pieces down to six. So I've already got my mark made uh, previously like I did with the four by fours, and I'm going to actually cut the excess off these two feet and keep the remaining six. There we go. So I've got three more of these to make, which will make up my sides of the table. Okay, so we're back, and what we're about to do now, we're about to start assembling the sides for this table. And it's a really very simple concept, and it should come out perfectly straight if you follow the actual concept itself. So what we've done, we've taken two of the legs, laid them down. They're not actually equal distance right now. I'm worried about getting that here in a minute, but I'm just going to show you the concept we're going to use. Lay it down. Framework is actually going to be made of a two by fours. So I've got a six foot piece two by four. And what we're about to do, we're about to uh, mount the uh, two by four onto the four by four to make up the framework. And what I've done is taken a, a scrap piece of two by four and to, exact, to get it lined up or exactly straight because this, this side will have a side piece that's going to tie both sides in, in together. So I'm taking a two, piece of two by four and I'm checking my measurement. All I'm doing is just laying it up against the 4x4. Four four. It's not going to be bolted onto it. I'm just checking so I can get my 2x4 the exact same length so when I tie the sides in, it'll be exactly square. So I know I've got to, I've got to have it here and I'll mount the 2x4 uh, the to the very top of the 4x4 four four to, to make it straight. What I have here is a countersink. And I'm going to make holes in the, uh, the two by four so we can put the, uh, the bolt in for it. And what we're using are headlock screws. There's a two and seven eighth length headlock screws to make up the framework of the table. So 
So he went from a regular uh, drill to an impact drill. 12 volt to the 18 volt. Don't, don't crush the wheel. Okay. There you go. Gonna be the same concept down to the other end. I'm gonna get my measurements. Four by four to the top to the two by four. Using the strap two by four to get exactly right. So everything is square. It's plus on the top. We got a few visitors. Say hi. <laughs> Say hi, girls. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all leaving? Y'all be careful in that rain. Are you sure? Well, wait, I gotta get a hug. You gotta tell me bye. <laughs> oh, good hug. Good, good hug. Wait, wait, let me get that. Let me get that. Let me get that. Oh, Grandpa hug. Okay, so here we are. We're back. Uh, we've already got the, uh, the, the top of the, uh, the framework done on the table one from one side. Now we're about to come and put the, uh, the bottom uh, cross piece on and it's actually going to be, we've got it measured, I'm going four inches from the bottom and it's pretty much however, uh, whatever height you choose for the bottom because the bottom, basically the bottom will actually be a shelf and so it's, you can play with that however you wish. I'm going four inches from the bottom, if you want to go six or seven inches, that's pretty much up to you. Four inches from the bottom on that side. See, I've got a mark on this side, and I'm using the same concept for the bottom one. I'm going to place my 2x4 on the mark, and the spacing, use it for the side. So I'm going to bring my 2x4 to the edge of my spacer. where it needs to go and then I'm going to drill my holes. side should automatically line up because we've already got the space so we're gonna come in Okay, now we've got one side built and complete. And basically what we'll be doing, we'll be standing this side up 
And now we're about to make the other side. Okay, so now everyone, we're back. And as you can see, we've got both sides that the table will be comprised of. Both sides are already made. Got them standing up. So all we gotta do now is we're gonna cut the uh, end pieces, top and bottom. Everything should be the same length. So we're gonna cut the end piece. It's gonna go here and on this end as well to basically give us the framework of the of the table. And we decided we're gonna make that those those pieces two and a half inches long. So we will need a total of 12 pieces, all of them cut at two and a half feet. And it should tie everything in. And we'll show you that process when we come back. Okay, so now that we've got uh, uh, one two by four that we've already got, I've already got measured out two and a half feet. And we're, like I said, we need 12 pieces all cut at two and a half feet long to tie the whole table in. So what I'm doing now is gonna cut 12 pieces at two and a half feet. Okay, so a little bit of information I wanna, I wanna give you guys is that when you're cutting multiple pieces of wood that's gonna be the same length, you wanna make sure that you basically measure it after every piece you cut. Because what you wanna remember is that you gotta compensate for the width of the blade. So this, this blade has little tabs on it. So that's why when you're cutting, you always wanna make sure if you cut to the right side, you wanna cut every piece exactly to the same size so that so that your width and your length comes out exactly the same if not if you're not comp if you're not uh, basically uh, allowing for the width of the blade your whole project is going to come off because what's going to happen is if i wanted to measure another piece that's two and a half feet long and i don't allow for the width of the blade that second piece is going to come up short so just keep that in mind anytime you're cutting multiple pieces. Okay, so we're back once again and we've got our 12 cross pieces cut. So now all we're now gonna start doing is just tie, start tying our table in so that once we get two top pieces in, it'll actually make it sturdy enough and we'll be able to go around and, and put in all the rest of them. So as you can see, the first piece is gonna go across here and automatically should match up, should be flush on top. And I've already pre-drilled my two holes. This is my fault. It's actually an accident. I wasn't thinking. So when I drilled that, uh, it's actually wrong location because it would actually come across. If I tie in it, that's actually going to hit this screw here. So you always want to go the opposite side. So I had to come back in and drill the top hole here and then come in for the bottom. So now I'm going to put my, my bolts in it and lock it in. Now we're doing the same thing on this side. Okay, now we're gonna go to the other end and put that one on.
Okay, so all we did was just, I just flipped the table upside down, and now I'm putting the bottom pieces on. Okay, so we're back and what we're going to do is we're going to take the remaining cross pieces that I've, that I've cut pr uh, earlier and we're going to lock it every, everything in. So top and bottom of the, of the table will actually have four more cross pieces to be going in into it. As you can see, one is going to go up against the legs. You can see the legs are, we've got the table turned upside down. We will come back later on and put casters on, on the legs just like we've done on the big one, so that you can take it and move it anywhere you want. Uh, we will actually be, uh, I've already pre-drilled some holes, countersink holes on the side, so I'm gonna tie this one in. And I came in, I measured 20 inches from the leg. Give my first brace, it's gonna go here. You can see I've got it marked. I marked it and then I came in with, a, with my square and uh, put a straight line so to make sure it was straight. Same on this side, I came, we're gonna have another cross piece here that'll go up against the legs, and then 20 inches from the legs in will be my other brace. So ultimately in the end, you'll have four braces, top and bottom, on, the, on this table. So I'll turn around, start putting the screws in, we'll come back and show you what it looks like once we're done. Okay, we're back. So as I explained earlier, we're gonna put the cross braces in on the table. I've already got them installed now. As you can see, like I said, it's still the bottom, bottom of the table. The legs are sticking out. We will come back later on once we finish up the top and we'll put uh, caster wheels on it so we will be able to move it wherever we need to. Uh, the caster locking wheel, shall I say. But you can see all the cross pieces are on. Good and sturdy and we're gonna flip it over, stand it upright, and I'll do the same on the top. Okay, so we're back. I'll let you take a look at this table. This is the very, this is the top of it. Everything's flush on top because the, we're gonna actually come back later on and actually put the actual table top uh, on it. But you can see, if you're looking down the bottom, you can see the, the bottom braces, and all I'm gonna do is just duplicate exactly what you see up on top. And to show you guys how I, I just pretty much guessed it where I wanted my braces to be. So I measured from the inside leg, 20 inches, and that's where I got my mark. And then I'll come in with a square and make that finish it up. And you'll be able to see. But this is how it's done. Lay my square here, my mark, and across. Same as my other mark, come across. That's exactly where the remaining braces will go. Okay, so we're back. Uh, I've flipped the table over and I actually put in the rest of my cross pieces for the top. You can see, got them locked in. Got my top brace here at my 20 mark. 
And the only things left is actually come back later on and put the, we're gonna put the, the top on. We decided to go with one by sixes for the top. This is gonna be a workbench. You can, it, it, your choice to put any type of top you would like on it, plywood or formica, whatever you wish to put on it. Um, but we're gonna go one by sixes and then we'll come in later on and put casters on it. You can see it, it's good and sturdy. It will not break. So, we're putting the top on it, we'll show you what that looks like once we're done. Okay, so we're back, and what we're going to do is come in and put the, the uh, we've got the one by sixes laid out on top. So it takes, for this particular table, it takes six one by sixes, uh, just edge, butt it together uh, to make up the top. And what I did, you can you look closer, you can see the line. I've come in on our braces that are underneath that I put in, installed on top of the table. I've come in and, and drew a line straight across where all my braces are at, and we'll put two screws in each uh, one by six to lock it into the into the brace, and that way the uh, top will actually be permanently, permanently mounted, and it won't move. And you wonder how I got my straight lines, I used a T-square. All I did is lay it up there, lay it in place. Should be automatically be a straight line, and came with my pin and drew across. So now we'll come in, we'll drill the holes, and then we'll countersink uh, two inch screws into the top, and the whole thing will be complete. Okay, we're back at the end and uh, going to show you we've already installed the uh, one by sixes on the top of the table. And this is the actual top. There's nothing else to do to it. We just put one counter like one screw in each one by six at our 20 mark and where our braces are at. And like I said, now it's good and solid. You can see if you look on the bottom, we got the open brace down the bottom. All we got to do is come back later on and buy a few more one by sixes and we'll actually finish that bottom uh, rack off just like we've done the top. So it actually basically be a shelf where we can actually put tools or if you want to store something on the underneath of it you can. And final thing we'll do we'll buy some uh, some casters. You can go to your your uh, favorite hardware store, Lowe's, what we like to deal with and we'll buy these these casters, we'll put the same type of casters on this table. Uh, they are actually locking casters, so uh, really good quality. Best ones we found. Uh, once you put them on and uh, move this table, you can lock it down and it's not going anywhere. And the last thing we'll do, this is actually our one of our workbenches we're going to use, but we're going to typically we wouldn't normally do it, but my son wants to put a stain on it, so we're going to we're going to let him stain it. And see if it just to give it some some type of uh, personality. You don't have to, but he wants to try it out, so we'll we'll try it and see what it looks like. Well, guys, we're finishing up for the night. We'll finish the table tomorrow, so we'll see you on the other side. 
Okay guys, we're back today and uh, we last left, uh, we were putting the stain on the table. And as you can see, the stain is now dry. Actually, he gave it a little bit of, little bit of uh, character to it, so not bad looking at all for, for a shop table. And we also mentioned that we'll be adding uh, casters and these are three inch uh, polyurethane uh, casters from hardware store, so we're going to put these on and then we'll be adding uh, the, the lower shelf to the uh, to the workbench and all we're going to do is just I'll cut down some one by sixes and we're going to do the, the lower shelf just exactly like we do the top just won't have a stain to it so we'll be adding these these uh, casters to the bottom of the table uh, with uh, the same two and seven eighths inch headlock screws and the reason for that because the base of these casters have a big hole so you can see that zoom in on it pretty good size hole there so you need a we'll be needing screws wood screws with a pretty good size head to it to hold it in place so we'll be using the two and seven eighth uh, headlock uh, screws we got a big big head on it to hold these in we'll get started Okay, we are back, and now we've got our three inch casters on, I've got them locked, so what I'm going to do is just kind of simply unlock them, and I will show you how freely this table moves with the casters. One person can easily move it in any position. Any location, wherever you want it. So I can move this with one hand. And if I had to guess, I would say this this particular bench probably weighs about probably close to a hundred pounds. So fairly easy. Very good idea to put put casters on. You can move it where you want it. The only thing left to do now is come in and put the uh, the lower shelf in, shelving in, and it will be a complete project. Okay, so we're back and we're about ready to finish it, top this project. So uh, what we've done now is we've gone and come in and, and laid uh, our uh, one by sixes down on the bottom shelf in place where they need to be. So the only thing I need to do is cut two pieces for each side to fit between the four by fours and then I will come in and and screw everything in place and this project will be complete but as you can see I've got both pieces I've already got a mark the excess is going to be coming off in the ends so I'll be cutting the excess off and the remaining piece will be what will go in between the two four by fours and then we'll 
get everything screwed in place and it will be finished. Okay, so now we're at the saw and I'm going to cut off the, the remaining, uh, or actually the excess pieces that, that I will not need. And just keeping in mind, I began this project by cutting on the right side of my, of my line, my mark. So I'm going to continue that on on these, these cuts as well. Okay, so I'm putting in these final two pieces. And as you can see, perfect fit. They're all just laid in there, and then now all we gotta do is come back in and, and bolt everything, screw everything in, shall I say. And it'll be done. Okay, we're back, and the final stage of this is actually uh, uh, screwing in the uh, the one by six down the bottom, so that's what I'm about to do. I'm gonna uh, put my countersinks in, come in with two inch uh, in uh, outdoor deck screws to uh, complete this whole project. Now we'll come down on the opposite end and doing both of them first and then I'll complete all to the center. I do have this board that's kind of warped at the end. Don't worry about it because once I put a screw in there, it's going to all be nice and tight. Okay, now we are back guys and uh, just wanted to show you the finished product. We have finished our first workbench on this segment of uh, Back to Our Roots shop uh, segment. So you can see, like I said, it moves freely, very easily, and uh, very simple project. So those of you guys that are tuning in to just like to let us know uh, what you think about this first project, give us a little bit of feedback and maybe there's something else that you guys would like to see us see us do in the shop edition. 
just let us know. We'll be more than happy to, to address any any uh, questions you want to have about it. Signing off from Backyard Roots, today's edition of Shop. All right, guys, please like and subscribe and share our videos. It helps us out a lot, and please give us input. Thanks, guys, and see you on the other side. Back to our roots, back to our roots. Back to our roots.